Greetings to you in the gracious and mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. A warm welcome to you to the YouTube channel of Pastor Joseph Prasanna Kumar. If you are joining us for the first time, I welcome you to this channel and I would encourage you to hit the subscribe button. And if you are a regular visitor to this channel, please share this message and be a blessing in the life of your family and friends. We are meditating on the life of Joseph from the book of Genesis. And today we draw to come to the concluding episode of this meditation. And we will title it, The Highlights of Joseph's Life and God at Work in Joseph's Life. For this, we will turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 47, verses 27 to 31, and then move on to chapter 50, verses 15 to 21. What do we see? First and foremost, we see symmetry in God's plan. We can never know or in advance or we can never understand, but we can see symmetry here. And why do I say that? 17 years, Jacob's and his family lived in the land of Goshen. 17 years was Joseph's age when he was sold as a slave. 17 years, Joseph served as a prime minister to the country. My dear friends, perhaps it may be un incomprehensible for you and me to understand. But our God is a God of symmetry, of creation. We only need to look deep and understand. And you will understand the symmetry of God's plan in your life as well. It's not just with numbers, but it could be with anything. Ask God to reveal that symmetry in your life. And as God reveals that to you, praise God and give all glory and honor to his name. Now we will move to Jacob, where he completed his life according to God's plan. And towards the end, he is now adopting the two sons of Joseph as his own. And therefore, they become part of the tribes. In normal world, a person with so many children will not adopt two more children that to his grandchildren. But because it was part of God's plan that Ephraim and Manasseh should be two tribes, God made Jacob adopt Joseph's children. Joseph was replacing Reuben as the firstborn because Reuben being the firstborn, he had the responsibility or he had an additional priority of getting two portions when compared to the rest of the children who got one portion each. But what we see here is because of Reuben's sin, Reuben's birthright or Reuben's additional portion was taken up by Joseph and those two portions are given to Ephraim and Manasseh. Jacob makes Joseph promise and the promise was not to leave Jacob's body in Egypt. Chapter 49 and verse 30. And this promise was later fulfilled in chapter 50 and verse 30. Even in death, he made sure that his testimony, that he was serving the living God and that his testimony was not tarnished. Dear friends, this again brings us back to the point. What's the kind of life that you and I are living? For the society around us to see. And as we get to Jacob choosing the children, for the fifth time we see in, Je in the book of Genesis, God chooses the last over the first. The Bible tells us the first shall be last and the last shall be first. The first example we see it between Abel and Cain. Then we see between Isaac and Ishmael. Then we see between Jacob and Esau. Then we see between Joseph and Reuben. And now, between Ephraim and Manasseh, we see that choice was made. Dearly beloved, God says what he will do and he does what he will say. As we continue to read in Genesis chapter 50, we see that Joseph's brothers now have a fear of vengeance, the fear that Joseph might be vengeful on them. They plot or they try to think. They have got back to their horizontal thinking and not vertical. Despite enjoying the land of Goshen and supplies from Joseph for 13 years, they still doubted Joseph. 
it is good to be mindful of the sin that we have committed but it is wrong to think that we have not been forgiven especially if we have repented with a true heart in our studies earlier we recognized the fact that the brothers repented truly when we doubt the forgiveness we are given that means we are doubting god's grace and god's free gift this means indirectly that we do not have faith dear friends is there a doubt in your mind about the forgiveness you have received for your past sins if so turn to god right now and ask him to fill you with that complete faith the gift of faith which can only come from the holy spirit which can only come by the holy spirit indwelled in you completely which is of course dependent on you your full surrender to god ask god to help you to believe that complete forgiveness in response to the brothers doubt of joseph's forgiveness please turn with me to chapter 50 verse 17 where we see joseph's reaction he wept he was sad that they did not trust him that they did not believe his words when we do not believe the words of jesus god is saddened in a similar manner dear friends do you want to put to cause sadness to god after all the love he has had for you what we see later on happening is that brothers all the brothers they fall prostrate they give a pledge to be his servants in genesis chapter 50 and verse 18 but we see joseph is giving a reassurance in verse 19 how can we be sure of god's assurance because joseph said do not be afraid in a similar manner and much more than that god tells us to fear not it is recorded 365 times in the bible one for each day and here again another symmetry of god 365 times god says fear not and god created a year with 365 days when you look at all these things we just have to stop and say o oh lord my god when i in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands have made once again we see that joseph is recounting and explaining god's plan and he comforts his brothers dear friends today in a similar manner and much more than that god wants to comfort you and me with his presence with his love with his tender loving care are you and i letting god do that as we look back on the learnings which we have gleaned through the life of joseph may the holy spirit teach you guide you and lead you in the days to come so that you will be a more powerful witness for god among those around you let us close our eyes in prayer heavenly father lord we want to thank you for your word we want to thank you for joseph we want to thank you for the lessons that we have learned through the help of the holy spirit from the life of joseph we want to thank you for every brother and sister who have listened to this series and lord who are specially listening to this message right now we pray that whatever be their challenge in the name of jesus it should be, it will be fulfilled we pray that whatever be their sickness in the name of jesus that they will be healed we pray that whatever be their shortcoming at work in society in family in the name of jesus they will receive their full we pray that in the name of jesus your holy spirit will which is indwelling in them will teach them and guide them in the paths of righteousness and that your name will be glorified in and through their lives we thank you lord for this message We thank you Lord for the gift of your son and our savior Jesus Christ. We thank you Lord for the gift of the Holy Spirit that is indwelling in us. We pray that everyone who is listening to this message will be challenged, will be burdened to spend more time with you and with your word. And we pray that even as they read your word, your Holy Spirit will guide them and administer to them and teach them so that they can live lives which are pleasing in thy sight. and can glorify your name in jesus most precious name we ask amen